The measured pulse sequence generator generates an electrical signal based on user-defined measurements. In this example, we have our pulse sequence generator generating a signal and modulating it with a laser. The modulated signal will then be received by a photodiode and a low-pass filter will be used to remove the optical component and keep the data signal. The result will be visible in the dual port oscilloscope. Clicking on the measured pulse sequence generator opens up the general windows property. The pulse sequence will be defined by a user-defined file. To define what the file of the pulse generator should be, click beside the file name box and select the data file to use. Before calculating the program, we can have a look at the data file that is currently selected. This data file was made by simply creating a text document and changing the suffix to .dat. The first column is the time and the second column is the amplitude of the pulse at that time. Calculating the project and clicking the visualizer, we can see the original pulse we created based on the data file and we can also see the demodulated signal. We can paste some more data in the data file and save it. After saving the data file, we have to reload the new file into the pulse generator. Calculating the program and clicking the visualizer, we can see that the signal now repeats itself because we added more values to the pulse sequence. Going into the measured pulse sequence generator, we can also change scale. The value of scale will scale the amplitude up by whatever value we select. Choosing a scale of 10 will scale our amplitude up by a factor of 10. Given that we currently have an amplitude of 0.5, scaling it by 10 should give our signal an amplitude of 5. In the properties of the measured pulse sequence generator, we can also change the start time of the measured pulse sequence. Changing the start time to 0.5 nanoseconds will start the sequence halfway through the second pulse. Going back to the properties and going into the numerical window, we can change the interpolation value to cubic interpolation. Calculating the program and clicking the visualizer, we can see that the cubic interpolation causes the transitions to become more curved. Going into the properties and clicking the simulation window, we can change sample rate. Clicking beside the sample rate box brings up the parameter script editor. The value for sample rate is currently defined by the global parameter sample rate. Clicking evaluate shows us the current sample rate below. The value for sample rate can also be changed to be dependent on other layout parameters or can be defined by a function. Clicking anywhere on the workspace opens up the layout parameters. In this window we can change the sample rate as well as any other layout parameters. Going back to the pulse sequence generator, we can click evaluate script and see the new sample rate.